coming up on this edition of ATV News. Today, I'm pleased to announce our plans to build more temples. President Nelson announced 13 new temples at General Conference. We'll tell you which of those you can get to on one tank of gas. At what I've seen in the last 19 months, I really wouldn't want to go through this again. Logan Regional Hospital is near capacity. We'll tell you how many beds are open today. Most importantly, we got to do something incredible. Alex Boyer was in Logan. We'll tell you why fans both cheered and cried. If you don't have your winter coat yet, I'll give you a deadline for when you really need it in weather. You might still be a little heartbroken over losing to BYU this weekend, but stick around and I'll show you something that might make you feel a little better. All that and more, this is ATV News. This is the Saturday morning session of the 191st semi-annual general conference. Conference returned to the conference center this weekend for the first time in two years. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Leah Crishoni. And I'm Sarah Murphy. Members of Congress are still trying to figure out a long-term solution after being hours away from a government shutdown last week. Experts say a government shutdown happens when the government runs out of money and causes non-essential federal programs to close. It reopens when a budget solution is passed. They say shutting down slows economic growth, some federal employees lose their jobs, and in the past, it's even closed the stock market. On Thursday, President Biden signed legislation to fund the government temporarily. But experts say a long-term solution will require a unified decision from both parties represented in Congress. Both parties are responsible and responsible in roughly equal measure. But neither side wants to take the blame. When you're trying to deal with the other party, when Republicans and Democrats are trying to bargain with each other, they can use this as a bargaining chip. They can say, we're not going to vote to raise the debt ceiling or fund the government unless you give us some policy concession, unless you give us this. The bill Biden signed goes until December 3rd, so experts say we can expect to revisit this issue in the coming month. Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints gathered to watch the 191st semi-annual General Conference. With notebooks ready, these Logan adults listened to songs from the choir and messages of hope from church leaders. I really need to strengthen my relationship with the Savior and how not just having faith in Him but getting to know Him. Along with listening to these messages of unity, most of the speakers were able to unite physically this weekend. I learned how this conference looked a little bit different from last conference. Brothers and sisters, welcome to General Conference. Greetings. What a joy it is to be with you. And words of welcome came from Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints President Russell M. Nelson at the 191st semi-annual General Conference. Church leaders met at the conference center in Salt Lake City for the first time in two years because of the pandemic. But this year, it looked a bit different, empty. We are pleased to again meet in the conference center, although small in numbers due to the continued constraints associated with COVID-19. The return to the conference center also meant return of live music from the Tabernacle Choir on Temple Square. At the conclusion of his remarks over the weekend, President Nelson made an announcement. Today I'm pleased to announce our plans to build more temples at or near the following locations. President Nelson announced 13 new temples all over the world in Asia, Africa, South America, and North America. With this past conference, Nelson has announced a total of 83 temples, more than any other president of the church. The closest was Gordon B. Hinckley back in the late 90s, early thousands, with 78 temples announced. Nelson says he believes that with more temples comes more spiritual and physical protection. I promise you that over time, the temple will become a place of safety, solace, and revelation. With the final notes sung, 
and the last words of the weekend declared, President Nelson concluded with a reminder. The Lord declared that he would hasten his work in his time, and he is doing so at an ever-increasing pace. We are privileged to participate in his holy work. With all the new temples they announced this conference, preparation is still in the works for the Smithfield Temple announced last conference. This is the location that you're about to see of where the Smithfield Temple will be built. It's going to be located on 800 West and 100 North, but officials say the building process is slow. We've seen no designs. We've seen no renderings. We have a feeling that once it's released to the general public, then we'll start seeing more in-depth design. Officials say you can find updates on the church newsroom and you'll find a link to their website on our Facebook page. Logan Regional Hospital says its ICU is about to reach capacity. Logan Regional says they have four open ICU beds today. While cases are going down in the community, it may take a few weeks to see that happen in the hospital. Workers say they are feeling the pressure. It's been a stressful period of time in general for the last few months um, because we're running at higher capacity than normal. May says about 85% of admitted COVID patients are unvaccinated and getting the vaccine will lessen the numbers. Now for an update on the number of coronavirus cases here in Utah. There have been almost 10,000 new cases in the state since last week with more than 22,000 active hospitalizations. There have been more than half a million total cases. In Cache County, there have been 604 new cases since last week with more than 1,200 active hospitalizations. There have been almost 30,000 total cases. At USU, there have been 12 new cases since last week with 73 active cases. There have been more than 3,600 total cases. Now for an update on vac vaccination rates in Utah. This map shows the health districts of Utah. The overall vaccination rate across Utah is about 53%. The Bear River Health District, which contains Cache County, is at 46.5% fully vaccinated. The Tri-County District is the least vaccinated at 30.8%, and the Summit County District is the most vaccinated at 73.9%. Last week, we told you about a student petition to change the university vaccine requirement. The student group, Young Americans for Liberty, has been getting signatures and hopes to meet with university administration to change their minds. We're pleased that students are exercising their right to be able to express their opinions that way. Morales said Young Americans for Liberty had not met with him or other administrators yet, but he said he's open to a meeting. It's just been uh, a very important thing in my heart lately. And coming up, we'll tell you what Alex Boye sang and talked about at a Logan concert. It's your own future that this is going to impact. We'll show you the new view that's visible because of the drought. And coming up in weather, William Boltes will have the seven day forecast. The current temperature is 64 degrees. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. The Surplus Store. Someone's trash is about to be my treasure. We have cords and cables here. We have bags full of towels and sheets. Do you want this fold-up mattress? Because we don't. We got keyboards, paint cans, whatever this is, typewriters, computer monitors. It's destiny on the line. We want you at Surplus. Products are not guaranteed to work. All sales are final. This commercial is not endorsed by Utah State. 
Today, one out of every four American kids is Hispanic. That means many of the future doctors who will care for us, the engineers who will build our cities, the scientists and entrepreneurs of our country can be your kids. We all know how hard it is for you to send them to college. This is why we want you to know you are not alone. And every day more people support you to make it happen. Many support you. And the Hispanic Scholarship Fund helps you prepare, plan, and pay for your kids' college education. HSF.net. Welcome back. You can grab a loaf of bread today at the North Logan Walmart, but Saturday, you would have been turned away. A pipe broke under 1600 North, cutting off water for businesses and homes in the area. This road was just bubbling up with water. And somebody came out here to try and fix that. <laughs> and in order for us to work out, we have to turn off the water. So we had to, we had to close Walmart down. While they worked on the pipe, Confused and concerned, shoppers were redirected to the South Walmart. The store opened its doors on Sunday morning. This was campus a few hours ago. It's cleared up a little bit since then, but we're going to be looking forward to a lot more fall weather this week. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm very excited for no more perfect blue skies, no more perfect weather. Fall is here, and you wanted fall, you got fall. But more on that later in the seven day forecast. First, let's look at the national radar. The east side, this side, looking like uh, a lot of rain going on, especially in the south here by Florida. West, not as much going on, but let's take a closer look at Utah itself. Also, not a whole lot, a little bit going into Wyoming here, but remember these radars show precipitation, not cloud cover. We're actually seeing a lot of clouds right now, and we will be throughout the rest of the week, but if you were to look at this same radar later in the week, we'll be seeing a lot more green. Just like our three-day air quality forecast, which is showing good quality for the next three days, Utah Air says no unrestricted action. We're seeing a very similar story with our current air quality conditions, we're sitting at a 5.5 micrograms per cubic meter, which is, puts us well in the good range. Uh, 12 is where we go into the moderate range. So we're looking pretty good. And now for the seven day forecast. As you can see, we're getting lots of exciting weather. And we're just looking at lightning and rain almost every single day besides Sunday. Sunday is a Sunday. Um, Wednesday though, 40% chance of lightning and rain. Thursday, 70. Friday, 80%. Saturday, 50. Monday and Tuesday though, if you'll notice, going into freezing temperatures, chance of rain means we could be looking at some snow, which is extremely exciting to me at least. So break out those coats, break out those sweaters, because fall is upon us. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Will. It's not a walk, it's not a run, it's a swim upstream for these fish. In Porcupine Reservoir, people are gathering at the Little Bear River to watch the annual salmon run. Each fall, kokanee salmon, which are normally silver, turn red and swim upstream. Officials say that the red color makes the fish easy to spot in the water where they lay their eggs. They say you can expect to see the salmon until the end of the month. Water levels are still low in Utah and drought levels are high. Ting Yu Cheng shows us how bad it is compared to the past years. Utah has a really dry climate, but according to drought.gov, this is the worst it has been in 10 years. There are few factors contributing to our shortage. From the trout provided on the drought.gov website, we can see most of the area of Utah has serious water shortage. In usual years, when dry is not happening, the water can go as high as up to my knees, but right now, it's only till my angle. Droughts, in fact, I believe the last really big one was around 2003 to 2005. Um, this year, compared to that, is actually worse. If you look at drought, so I believe it's drought.gov for Utah, they have a format that shows each of the previous years compared, and we're seeing prolonged drought, which is therefore making it worse. And what are some of the reasons that is leading to the drought? 
Part of it is the fact that we are using a lot of water. I know that agriculture in Utah uses a huge chunk of it, and a lot of it is used to actually create grass and hay that is then transferred out to China. And then it's our second one, our second hauling of hay that then gets sold to Utah. But because of it, we use a lot of water. Plants are watered all year round. People like their green yards. Part of it too is also the fact that we have not received a significant amount of snowpack. Yu Chen, ATV News. Officials say saving water can not only help the severity of the drought, but can also help you save money. They want something done about climate change and took to the streets Monday. Starting on the quad, Cache Valley climate activists made signs and had an open mic. They shared their concerns about air quality and climate change in the valley. The group walked down Main Street and held a rally at the historic courthouse. Even though we're not going to be affecting change perhaps on the global level, even the local change can propagate out. And, you know, anything that we do for our community is going to improve it. People of all ages spoke. Their main call to action? Tell your local representatives you want them to do more about climate change. Alex Boyer headlined a concert at the Cache County Fairgrounds. Emma Fates shows us why his singing wasn't the only thing that brought tears to fans' eyes. Alex Boyer got the crowd dancing at Thursday night's concert, and he wasn't the only one. People got in for free and heard from local artists before Boyer ended the night. I think it's super great that they were able to get someone like Alex Boyer to be able to come out for such a big event. The fairgrounds were packed with people, booths, and food trucks. The turnout was incredible, the talent and the people. But hearing good music wasn't the only goal for this concert. I wanted to talk about suicide prevention. While fans say they were so excited to see Alex Boyer tonight, he wanted to emphasize this concert was really about igniting the light or starting important conversations about suicide. It's time for you to be Kanye's and Muhammad Ali's and call yourself great. The concert was part of Cache County's efforts to bring needed resources to people struggling with their mental health. There are others in this community who care about them. One of the biggest lies that goes through somebody's mind when they're contemplating suicide is they think they don't matter and they think that no one else cares. Those are lies. People at this event heard from speakers and saw booths all offering messages of hope. Boye says while the subject can be dark, people are ready to talk about it. They're tired of losing their friends and their, losing their moms and, and dads and their cousins and their aunts and losing their friends at school and high school. They're tired and they just want to be a part of something. It would be really hard to find someone who hasn't been affected by suicide. My great uncle, he committed suicide just a year and a half ago. Emotions were high during the concert, but Boye says it was a step in the right direction. Talking saves lives. Emma Fates, ATV News. Zook says the whole concert was funded by donations from Cass County community members. It's always nice to have an activity to do to like spend time doing fun things together. We'll show you the event that had students playing golf in a TSC. Could not be more grateful for the crowd and our, our fan base to, to sell it out and pack it out and be loud and create a great environment. You won't want to miss the new game day tradition for Utah State students. Algier is in! USU's Bruce Ego matched the black and blue uniforms on the field. We'll show you how they lost the fight in sports. Body language. Without saying a word, it can tell you so much. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast.
weekend, Aggies wore black to support their football team against their rival, BYU. By the end of the night, they wore black to mourn their loss. Oh, sorry. Um, welcome to ATV Sports. I'm Yvonne Bass. It was a defense-heavy game for the Aggies, Rice being key against Romney, Nakua, and Rex. The Aggies showed their teeth in the second quarter with a touchdown, McGriff catching Bonner's throw, one-handed, might I add. And in the last quarter, another touchdown with Tompkins. But the Aggies could not stop Algier again and again and again with three touchdowns and one in the third quarter with Rex. Here are the Cougars waving the wagon wheel for the second year in a row. USU women's soccer also had a rough weekend, losing to New Mexico 1-2 and then to San Diego State, 0-2. They will play in the comfort of their home field on Friday against Fresno State Bulldogs. Now something that will lift our spirits, women's volleyball team won twice in a row this weekend against Nevada and San Jose State. The Aggies had to fight the Wolfpack's tough offense, but still took three of the four sets from Nevada. The San Jose Spartans led until late in the first set, but after Larson tied the score at 21, the Aggies swept the rest of the game. You can look here at the longest rally of the game. Stokes saving it twice. And ooh, Stahl gets the kill. They will be playing away from home against New Mexico tomorrow. You're all caught up on sports. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Yvonne. You might have heard the Utah State student section cheering during Friday's game against BYU, but you might not have seen the herd outside Maverick Stadium days before the game. <laughs> Students showed their school spirit leading up to the game Friday night by tossing the football, playing cornhole, and grilling on the barbecue. A herd events director says putting on events like this is something the herd is trying to do more of this season. Here we want to really install that Aggie spirit, tailgating before games, and so ever since our first home game to now, we've been tailgating every home game. Hundreds of students come out, get a bunch of food. We play cornhole. We got throwing a football around, getting ready for the games. While mostly students showed up to the tailgate with the herd, tailgating in the West Stadium parking lot is open to all Utah State fans and was packed with Aggies Friday night. With the return of in-person events, the USUSA Series Committee continues to plan more you can attend. The TSC Lounge turned into a neon mini golf course with other carnival games. <laughs> Students cheered, putted, and danced while glowing blue under neon lights at the neon mini golf event in the TSC Lounge. Students say they're happy to be back attending events in person. It's nice to do something fun on campus, especially when it's like something really random like mini golfing. You can look for more events like this around campus in the upcoming weeks. With many classes still online this fall, students say they need more hands-on learning. William Boltez shows us what the metal factory means to students. Preferably, I would have less homework and more time here. I didn't know that I could do this for a job. I think I've always been more hands-on. The Metal Factory is a free workshop at USU for students and faculty. It has professional machinery they can use for personal projects or school assignments. It's really fun. I feel like I've really learned a lot with the Metal Factory and it just is so fun. But it's not all fun and games in the Metal Factory. Students say it has guided their career paths and given them experience they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. <laughs> To be honest, if I didn't know this was here or if it wasn't here, I probably wouldn't be doing any of this. It is really important to know how to utilize the things that you've learned in your engineering classes. When all that you've done is seen them on paper and seen the equations. We're living in an like, increasingly digital world, so 
you know, spending time behind computers and doing a lot of sitting, I definitely prefer trying to get to the hands-on stuff. All students need to get started is some online training. It's actually a super, super easy process. There are several different trainings you can do. The simplest one is the blue permit, which lets you use hand tools like this. With some more training, you can get the green permit and use any of these machines in the factory. The factory has a wood shop, mills, lathes, presses, welding machines, and more. The lathe is pretty fun when you know what you're doing. Also the mill. This particular mill is pretty sweet. This is just an LED light panel that we built. I think everybody kind of craves, you know, stuff that's real and like when you get hands-on. But students say the metal factory is more than just a workshop. It's how they prepare for the real world. William Boltez, ATV News. To work in the metal factory, you just need to make a profile on the School of Engineering website and complete at least one of the trainings. Thanks for joining us on this edition of ATV News. You can find the previous editions on our Facebook page. We'll leave you with some more shots from the Alex Boyer concert. Have a great week, Cash Valley. So The Surplus Store. Someone's trash is about to be my treasure. We have cords and cables here. We have bags full of towels and sheets. Do you want this fold up mattress? Because we don't. We got keyboards, paint cans, whatever this is, typewriters, computer monitors. It's destiny on the line. We want you at Surplus. Products are not guaranteed to work. All sales are final. This commercial is not endorsed by Utah State.